Hey everybody, this is me Nikki. It is November 14th and I thought I'd talk about cloaking today. I don't believe in cloaking. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but my feelings are Bigfoot is just really good at camouflage and at staying still for very long periods of time. I've checked into chameleons, I've checked into photosynthesis and what uh, chloroform uh, does, you know, how it changes in the photosynthesis process and, and all of that. I just can't see that happening on hair, fur and skin. Uh, chameleons have a very special type of skin and uh, I'm not going to go into all of that because I could sit here and just read off of what I've learned. But I don't feel that they are that type of being, that they can do that. I think they're more along the lines of a regular mammal that just has the ability to camouflage and to hide itself. Um, it, I may be wrong. You know, and as soon as I see proof of that, then so be it. You know, then that's just the way it is. Now, there are a lot of good Bigfooters out there who claim they have video of this cloaking. But to me, everything I've seen just goes right back to pareidolia or matrixing, where your eye naturally, your eye and your brain actually, naturally want to make sense of what it's looking at and by doing that it sees faces you know there is you can see a face in almost any picture especially out in the forest but when you're there live and you're there taking the picture you don't see as many faces as you do when you have a still shot or video I've noticed that that's my own finding is that pictures that I've gone back and look at and I'm like that's a rock I know it's a rock because I was there and I kicked that rock but from the picture you know it totally looks like that's a face and an eyes and everything but that's but it's not the truth and a lot of it could what happens is I find people are posting stuff saying well there's a Bigfoot there and then they go and they outline it for you and that even makes you more prone to see whatever you know the photographer or whoever the person taking the picture wants you to see because I could do that too with a lot of my photos but I know good and well that those photos are nothing a lot of people don't see any of their photos till they get home and they upload them or put them on their bigger screen which makes them more suspect you know is it a Bigfoot is it not a Bigfoot um, we want to see things we want to believe that that's what we have when it in reality it's nothing if it doesn't move for a certain amount of time now I just said Bigfoot are real good at not moving I don't really know that. I am assuming because nobody's been able to catch, to have a good footage that everybody believes in. Because it doesn't matter who you are, if you put out a picture of Bigfoot, right away it's a hoax. Or you put it on there falsely. So it's going to be attacked. I know there's probably a lot of people out there who do really have photos and won't put them up for that fact that they're either going to be criticized, laughed at. I mean, I got laughed at, you know, this weekend when somebody found out, you know, that I'm uh, into Bigfoot and Sasquatch and finding out the truth. So that's just not going to change. It's not going to change, unfortunately, without science proving it and putting it in the books and having the blood sample taken from an actual body there will always be you know that doubt everybody's going to have that doubt but I don't want to get too far off the topic of cloaking 
people who have seen them cloaked, they have seen what they seen. You know, they, they, it, I can't take that away from them because I wasn't there. But in the same aspect, they shouldn't get mad at us, the ones who have not or do not believe in cloaking, because the science doesn't back it up. It just, it doesn't. Um, I think there was an article about some blood samples that had uh, chlorophyll in them. And to me, if it really did have that, then it was contamination. You've seen how um, hair and fur can develop mold and uh, fungus on it. I mean, look at, um, what is it, the, the sloth, its whole fur is contaminated with um, diff several different types of fungus that live on them. Why can't that happen with the Bigfoot? So, to me, it was purely contamination in that type of instance when it's found, because I just don't see um, a mammal using chlorophyll chloroform you know to to use as a, to change they don't have chloroplasts they can't photosynthesize you know that means that that body is using the sun to change and you know that's a plant that's not an animal who gets its energy from eating. So it just doesn't seem plausible for that to be in, in that case. And chameleons, you know, a lot of people say they change to their background, but really, usually it, they change for their moods. Um, and they don't drastically change all different types of colors. Each individual species has a range of color they can change. Light brown to dark brown, greens, uh, oranges, and that's in their scope to change. And it happens over gradually. It doesn't just go boom. You know, it, so, because I think I saw something out there on the net where just a rainbow colored chameleon walks by or something. That that doesn't happen that way. Doesn't happen that way. And um, that's that's my feelings. I don't know. What do you guys think? Tell me your stories about cloaking. What did you see? What did you actually see that made you believe you saw a being or animal? And it changed before your eyes. Because I would rather believe in Bigfoot as a spirit or ghost entity or walking that fine line between human and animal like the Native Americans believe. More than cloaking. I think cloaking is a really bad name that people are starting to get really confused between camouflage and cloaking. Because you, you've you all seen pictures and videos of guys in ghillie suits, and you can't see they're there. You know, to me, that is perfect camouflage. And I think they have that ability because of the way the colors of their their hair, fur, whatever you want to call it. Most everybody will argue that it is hair. So... I don't know exactly what it could be that makes, would make a mammal cloak. Let me know what you think. Comment below and I'll answer you back. So thanks for watching. See you later.